How's it going guys? Today we'll be introducing you to the Usurper Belt System. The Usurper Belt System is our endeavor to evolve pistol belts on the market for those that value longevity, comfort, ergonomics, fit, and reliability. In this video we'll be going over the design, features, picking up your size, setup, compatibility, best use practices, and more. Before we get into any of that though, we must get into the why, especially the G-Hook outer belt interface. We moved away from the traditional Velcro stacking two-part belts as the fitment and adjustment left a lot to be desired. And after hours on the range or out in the field, having thick webbing tightly hug your hips was not very comfortable. The Velcro stacking belts also feature a belt you'd really only use to provide a mounting platform for the outer belt. As for fitment and adjustment, dialing the fitment on the outer belt usually was a chore as while they do have a running end, it usually required balling up the excess or in our case, taping it up, cutting it, and then redoing it. The other problem was that belt loops, holster adapters, and other slide-on items reduced the amount of Velcro contact between the inner and outer belt. Having identified those issues, we decided switching to a padded inner belt, solve the comfort and usage issues with the inner belt, and switching to a dual connection outer belt made up of G-hooks, plenty of adjustment points, and Velcro adhesion solves the fitment issue. With all that out of the way, let's get into what makes this belt different, aka the features. Starting with the inner belt, this was designed as a reliable standalone belt. Instead of thick, uncomfortable scuba webbing, we developed an inner belt that would be comfortable to wear and be useful as the foundation of the belt system, and also double as a great uniform belt. The inner belt features a 1 inch Austria Alpine Cobra buckle. We went with this size as it doesn't get in the way of bending over, as larger buckles do, especially on smaller frames. The belt is made up of a 1 inch webbing that runs the entire length of the belt, an inner 8 inch closed cell foam, and an outer sheath made up of a durable soft loop velcro lamp. We went with an internal foam to cushion the outer belt's presence on the user's hips and waist. And went with soft loop velcro exterior as one of the two connection methods for the outer belt is to attach and catch onto the velcro and to take other velcro based attachments on the inner and outer side. On each side of the buckle are the outer belt's connection loops. The D ring has two static loops and the adjustment end has many more. These are used for anchoring the outer belt to the inner belt and we'll get into that real soon. Finally, this is a neat little tag that says the size on the end. Moving on to the outer belt, it features G-hooks on each side to anchor it to the inner belt securely. Starting on this end, the outer belt features two canton molly slots to attach two pistol mag pouches. They are placed so that the mags sit at an even height and don't stick up vertically too much, and also provide an ergonomic smooth magazine draw. In the dead space between of the pouches is a loop for retaining gloves in the sort. This is great for retaining items on a carabiner, but it is not recommended for items you plan on ripping off the belt like chem lights. The D-ring on the inner belt would be much better suited for stuff like that that you'd be yanking off. Moving down the belt, you'll notice that there's an internal tegrostomal plastic skeleton that offers structure to the belt, and that we have half-inch molly slots for more mounting options, especially for molly pouches that also use half-inch molly. Moving along to the opposite side, we have a holster mounting section. Here, most two-inch and two-and-a-quarter inch belt adapters can be attached, like the Safari Land UDLs, and True North Concepts and Mechas. This range of acceptance is achieved by this Tegra's extrusion at the bottom that can be removed by the user with a simple pair of scissors. If you have a two inch wide belt adapter, you'll run your scissors along the edge of the fabric as much as you need, and voila, you have a two inch wide section. If your UBL is two and a quarter inch wide, then all you'll do is slide your UBL on that. At the end is our other G-hook with our adjustment strap. The running end of the strap can be retained with these slots, so only what you need sticks out and will stay behind your sidearm and out of the way. Along the top, we have three suspender loop points if a three-point suspender is desired, and the inner side is of course lined with hook velcro. Now that you have a solid idea of what the belt looks like and offers, let's get into sizing. The belt at launch will be offered in four sizes with more coming out in the future. Those initial four sizes are small for 30 to 35 inch waists, medium for 33 to 38 inch waists, large for 36 to 41 inch waists, and extra large for 39 to 44 inch waists. The key thing here is that these measurements are not correlated to your pant size, but are based on your actual circumference at the waist in the uniform you'll be wearing with the belt the majority of the time. You'll need to measure yourself first around the belt loops to find your accurate measurements before ordering. Apart from sizing, your dominant hand orientation must be taken into account as while the inner belt is reversible from left to right hand users, the outer belt is size specific, so in ordering ensure you choose the correct side. Once you receive your belt, setting it up is straightforward. You'll start by unraveling the bundle and grabbing the inner belt. Run the adjustment end through your belt loops without the male side buckle attached to make it easier. Then feed that end through the loops on the male side. Due to the numerous loops that act as bumps, it is best to maintain slack between the two holes so you can easily feed the webbing through. After that, lay down the running end and grab your outer belt. 
Start with the static G hook and estimate which loop you need to start with and hook onto that loop. Then pull the belt against that loop and neatly wrap the belt around your waist ensuring clean, positive connection the entire length. At the end, take the adjustment strap and hook it to the static loop on the inner belt and tighten the belt down. When you initially add the outer belt, some trial and error will be necessary to figure out where to start your anchor so all your pouches and holster end up where you'd like. One tip for attaching the final hook when there isn't much slack to play with is to undo the buckle, attach the hook with the newly added slack, and then reconnect the buckle. A strip of one wrap is included to retain the running end of your inner belt to prevent it from ripping up when you remove your outer belt. Simply wrap it around your inner belt close to the end of the adjustment strap. Depending on what belt adapter you use, the adjustment end of the G-hook may not be adjustable due to the presence of the adapter, especially the True North Concepts MHA or any other clamp-on design. But there are ways to counter this easily. First, you can place the spacers on top of the top and bottom edges away from the center and find a tightness that allows the webbing to be pulled with intentional force. Second, you can reroute the straps to pop out ahead of the MHA or simply skip over the top and then back through the slots again. When cutting off the Tegris extrusion, be conservative with how much you remove, as depending on how far back your belt adapter goes, you may be able to use that as a backstop to prevent rearward movement. When looping the inner belt through your belt loops, it is advised to have the rolled or folded side facing up and the raw off side facing down. Right hand users will find this to be the appropriate orientation, but left hand users may have to flip it to place the adjustment straps where they need them. When setting up and donning the belt, it pays to take time to dial in the fit of the inner belt to be snug and the outer belt to start and stop where you want by testing which loops you want to anchor to and then ensuring you cleanly and evenly pull the belt across the velcro closure to secure the best fit for the entire system. When carrying heavier loads on the belt, three-point suspenders can be added to better spread the load and these do not impede the outer belt's donning process whatsoever. The usurper belt will be available starting July 4th and will be offered in four sizes, four colors, a right and left-handed variant at launch with more colors and sizes being added in time. We also have plenty of accessories coming out to build up the system coming soon, like the sidekick holster pad seen throughout this video. That said, we hope we've been able to effectively introduce you to the usurper belt and help you identify if this is the overt pistol belt for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below, DM us on Instagram, or email us at customerservice at shaw-concepts.com. If you'd like to check out our other offerings or learn more about the company, you can check us out at our website, shawconcepts.com, or our Instagram, Twitter, or Telegram. Thanks for your time, and as always, conquer all.